whole process of extraction, transformation, and loading, the whole process, if it if it's running on day-to-day -day basis, you don't expect uh, someone to go and run it every night. Or obviously, if it's a automated system, you want to schedule those ETL jobs from A to B and B to C. And, and finally, load into your data warehouse every day. So that process is called job scheduling. So you schedule your ETL tools, ETL jobs, and then you load it into your, uh, you can schedule, as I said before, uh, the scheduling can be either based on certain time slots available uh, to extract from your system, or it could be based on five, file availability, like your detail tool keeps polling for the file, and then as soon as it gets a file, it starts the job and finishes and loads, loads the data to the data warehouse. So these are type of scheduling you can do. These uh, job scheduling is available in most of the ETL tools. They already have inbuilt job schedulers, which uh, enables you to do different these different kinds of job scheduling. So, or um, there are also various uh, third-party schedulers available. You can also schedule jobs in your Windows server. Like you can have a cron, uh, in Unix server, you can create cron jobs to schedule your ETL jobs if it's compatible with uh, Unix scripting and shell scripting and all those things. And also you have uh, uh, the third-party tools like examples are shown here, Control M and TWS. These are all these are all few tools which are available in the market. So, yeah. So this is basically job scheduling. So you schedule a job based on your requirement. Usually, for loading a data warehouse, the jobs are scheduled based on time. So available time. It is not uh, as and when you get a file, or it could be from certain systems, but generally I have seen that it's basically based on certain time. So when the system is um, least used, the OLTP system, then they will extract the data and do the ETL process and load it into that data warehouse system. So that is, excuse me, job scheduling. Yeah, so they are just uh, giving examples. Yeah, the scheduler jobs can be made time dependent. Yeah, that's what I said. It could be either time dependent or it can be file dependent. So support teams, as I said, the operation teams generally sit out uh, and have uh, and have a monitoring system available in uh, in their data warehouse uh, system or ETL system where they will see and monitor or get triggers for your uh, job failures or or your successful uh, there is a team which is always monitoring these uh, jobs it's not it cannot be left alone what if the job fails and then there is a report a bottom report to be generated next day right so you have to maintain the integrity of your system and availability of the data to the users at all times so there's always a support team which is looking into these jobs and the job schedules and monitoring them using either the control tables, as I said before, or using email triggers or or manually checking the jobs every day in the morning whether it finished correctly or not. So that is job scheduling. So error handling. So we discussed about everything starting from extraction, transformation, and loading. And if everything goes smoothly, we don't need error handling, right? Error handling, as the name suggests, is a is a is a scenario which comes into play when there is problems either in your job execution as we discussed before the jobs could fail or if there is any issues with the data so what what kind of issues am i talking about here so say you have a requirement from your uh, you have defined a transformation logic in your 
uh, in your job saying that if my this particular record this particular column has this value then only pass the record if it has some other value other than this then fail the record say say for example you have a currency column in your data warehouse so you have a code table where you have list of currencies which is possible which you think is possible and needed for your data warehouse but certain say, suddenly your data get some other value for currency which is not listed in your coding database. So then what do we do with that data which is wrong? It has to go somewhere. You cannot just read that data and then you it doesn't follow your rules and then it just uh, disappears in between. So you have to know what is happening otherwise uh, you have to know what is happening with your data completely. There should be no loss of data. So either there should this the data should reach the data warehouse or it should fall short of something and it should go into certain uh, model where you manage these failed records. This is called error records and this handling these records is called error handling. Or another uh, scenario is where your job completely failed then nothing happened and then you're, now you have to see how to handle that failure. So that is also error handling or any system failures. Everything comes under error handling. So, so the first scenario they are discussing in here is where when your job actually fails. So when your job actually fails, you have to figure out how, why it failed. So before you do that, you have to get the backup so before you can resume your load, once it fails, once the job fails, you need to take the backup of your target system because you have running system which, uh, which is your current system. Before you resume or change anything by manually running, you have to take the backup and then rerun your jobs or recover your jobs from the point it failed. And then you have to, if everything goes fine, then it's fine. Then you don't have to restore the backup. If, if things don't go fine, you have to restore the backup and see what exactly happened. So this is the first step to get the backup of your target database so that if something goes wrong, you have, you can restore and get it back to the original position. So in different detail tools, there are different uh, uh, recovery methods available. In some, some cases, the recovery is possible using those methods in the ETL tools like just recover from where it failed or something like that. But in some cases, uh, this recovery may not be possible, right? So you have to know, like uh, for example, like there was a system failure, everything went down, the server went down, something broke down in between. You don't know and the system couldn't recover or capture anything where it failed and how it failed. It just shut down. The system just uh, shut down. So the tool doesn't know, the tool didn't exit gracefully, so it doesn't know where to start where. Uh, so the, in that case, the recovery mechanism fails. So in that case, you need to have a strategy behind how to bring up the system back when something like this happens. So this all comes under error handling. So your support team should be, yeah, so basically your su support team should know how in and out of the data and where it failed and how to handle these failures so that they can recover. They could, they could be automatic recovery. You, they could be recoveries like when the system went down, then the ETL job just comes up. When the server is up, the ETL job restarts from where it stopped and something like that or you have to go and do a manual intervention in the uh, and see what is happening and do the code maintenance and to restart the uh, data warehouse before the restart the ETL process before the next load so you have to prepare your system for normal load after so these things is this is called error handling but in general scenario error handling is basically needed for the second case which I talked about like 
uh, where there is issues with the data. So when there is issues with the data, the data is not in the expected format or expected way you have designed your system for, then you have to handle those errors somehow. You have to, there are different ways to handle, like you can actually reject those records into an error file or an error table and open that file or give that uh, file access to users who knows more about data. We call them data SMEs, data subject matter experts. They could look at these error files and then they can manually correct these data and then this could be reprocessed and pushed back into the ETL process. It's called reprocessing of the data. So that also comes, falls into error handling scenario where you are handling the errors in the data. So this process is called reprocessing. And uh, the example they are saying here is to categorize, uh, to minimize or to systemize your error handling, you can actually group your ETL process into different uh, stages so that you, you have a, you have a, a barrier, you have a certain breakpoint where you can actually recover your job. So in ETL process, generally you have staging areas. This ETL process doesn't go from E to L throughout in one shot. There are intermediate staging tables that uh, uh, like like you can group these ETL jobs into dimension jobs, fact jobs and uh, staging jobs and different groups so that you have a break in your ETL process so that when you want to recover your jobs it is easy to go and see which stage it failed and from that stage you can start your ETL. So the grouping has to be done properly and you can also have audit tables in your uh, ETL process, well, like after every process is completed, you just check the, uh, you just enter data into these audit tables saying that I read, in extraction I read these many records, say 100 records, and then in my transformation output I see uh, 90 records, and then you see 10 records went into error, so you can see the count uh, of these, some of the count of uh, your transformation and error records and see if it matches your uh, extracted record. So these kind of audit table, for example, you can maintain to do this error handling. And, uh, and after the whole process is completed, you can actually have uh, tables which, uh, which maintains the status like we discussed before. Uh, you can have a batch status table all these audit tables and batch status tables and all these operational tables are also uh, is also a data model which you which which is parallel to your ETL which uh, which is actually our operational tables which are maintaining the flow of your data model these uh, flow of your ETL process these tables are generally called control tables which controls the ETL process which can be audit tables or status tables or any kind of tables. These are called the control tables. And uh, these tables can also, also store data of whether what all jobs are still running and is it completed or is it still running. What if some extraction took too long and then it's just running be until the next time or until the next load starts so it's not finished yet. So all these status tables help you to monitor and run your ETL process in a, in a sequential manner and do error handling in a proper way. And these audit tables, this example shows that these audit tables can also be used to monitor your ETL monitor your ETL jobs which has run on particular day, has it finished or not. ETL also have their, apart from these audit, audit table, ETL tool also have their own logs to debug their errors, yes. So every ETL tool has their own uh, error logging system. They have their own error logs which you can send it to the, as soon as, like you can use these error logs like uh, say an ETL tool you are using and your ETL job is running and then you can 
trigger an email once your retail job fails in between and then send that error log by email attachment to a operational guy. So he will see the error log and he will know what is happening then he might have to connect to the ETL, uh, the operation database and then start working on the job. So these kind of error handling you can do. Uh, you can, you have to do in any ETL process. You cannot just assume that everything will go fine and then just design an ETL process. You always have to cater for something called error handling. Because data is something which can have thousands and thousands of probabilities. You can design an ETL system based on test data, 100 records, but when actual production data comes in, you never know what is uh, what is going to come through your ETL process. So you always have to have a plan B designed in your ETL process. That plan B is error handling. 